Hey, Concrete Freaks! This is Tyler Lay, and I'm back and telling you about unlocking the DNA of Fly Ash, or how is Fly Ash like fruit salad? This has been a project that we've been working on for about seven years now. There's a ton of people that have contributed. Big thanks to all those on the screen. And let's jump in. Fly Ash is a waste product from coal fire power plants. It's the smoky stuff that tries to fly up the flue. We catch it, it's like this powder, and if we don't use it in concrete, you know what happens? Oh, uh, we put it in a landfill, <laughs> no. But Fly Ash has amazing capabilities in concrete. It can improve the workability, the strength, the durability, the economy, the sustainability. Fly Ash is pretty much an amazing ingredient and can take concrete to a whole new level. And if you wanna learn more, check out this video on my channel. But what if we could predict the performance of fly ash in concrete? That's actually something we can't do very well right now. It's like unlocking the DNA of fly ash. You know DNA, right? It tells us our eye color, our skin color, our hair color, all kinds of things about our body. What if we could figure that out for fly ash? Or something like this, produce some kind of document where like we're showing food over here on the right, tells you amount of cholesterol, sodium, carbs, protein. What if we could do that for fly ash? It would tell us its contribution to strength, permeability, ASR, something else like that. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, right now, there's two types of fly ashes out there. That's what ASTM C618 says. And they're all based on the calcium oxide content. If it's lower than 18%, it's a class F. If it's higher than 18%, it is a class C. But does it do a very good job? Let's look at some data. On the x-axis here, I'm showing days, or how old the concrete is. And on y-axis here, I'm showing the compressive strength of that concrete. And over time, you can see the concrete gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. That's good, right? The black line is the control, so no fly ash in it at all. The blue line is the average for class F. You can notice it's a little bit lower early on, but then it gets stronger later on. And the red is the average for class C. It's a little higher early on, and then it has good long-term strength gain. But here is kind of the question. Can we do better than this? Look at that. Look at that spread. There's like a 20 MPA spread there. So we decided to take a little bit of a different approach. We started out with fly ash over here, and then we looked at it with a very fancy microscope called an automated SCM. I'll tell you more about that coming up. Then we grouped those data. We looked at more than 80,000 fly ash particles from a lot of 35 different fly ash sources, tons and tons of different fly ash. And then we used this machine learning algorithm. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the same machine learning algorithms that people like Target and Facebook and Amazon use to sell you stuff. We just tried to use it instead of bad for good to better understand fly ash. We grouped them. Then we said, let's make some concrete mixtures. We made tons of concrete mixtures, measured their performance, and we combined these two together. We combined the machine learning with the performance to get a predictive model. And ladies and gentlemen, this whole thing is called the particle model. Let's start here at the beginning, this automated SEM. Now I told you it's like a robot microscope. Well, not really a robot using a microscope. It looks more like this. It is a scanning electron microscope that can look at individual fly ash particles. It takes it a few seconds to find a particle, measure the size and shape of the particle, make sure that it is a fly ash particle, and then it also measures the chemistry. Not all particles have the same chemical makeup, but that's cool and all, but what do you do with that? Well, we looked at 35 different fly ash sources, and we used this thing called self-organized mapping, or SOM, and it is an artificial intelligence. It's like being in the matrix, right? You know the matrix, the movie, and artificial intelligence? You know what you can do with the matrix, right? You can, like, run up walls, do, like, flips, why people shoot at you, and, like, everything is great, and you never get hit at all. That's what artificial intelligence can do for you. So imagine what it's going to be able to do for us in fly ash, right? We figured out that each fly ash is a blend of nine groups. Nine fundamental groups. What? Don't worry, I'll explain it. Each group has a different chemical consistency or chemical makeup, and they have different abilities to contribute to the concrete in different ways. And 
I think of these flashes like fruit. Here comes the fruit solid part. And each one of these fly ashes have different amounts of silica, aluminum, calcium, iron, lots of other oxides as well. Just like an apple has different amounts of vitamin C, B6, vitamin A, iron, etc. Each group is like a different fruit. Get it? So if I was going to make fruit salad and I had different amounts of apples, oranges, etc., you know, here's the amounts right down here, then I would get a certain amount of properties out of that fruit salad, a certain amount of vitamin C, vitamin A, iron, etc. The same thing happens with fly ash. If I have different groups, one, two, whatever, all the way up to nine here, but depending on the percentages I have of each one, they're going to give me concrete with different properties. I know, mind being blown, right? Well, let me try to explain a little bit more in detail. Every group has a different chemical consistency. These are the groups. This is them. You can see group one's got a lot of iron in it. Group nine's got a lot of SiO2 in it, silica, and everyone in the middle is these varying chemistry of different types. And when I have a class C flash, I have two class C flashes, the black and the pink here, they um, have different amounts of these groups. You know, class C's have a lot of these group two through sixes for the most part, and class F's have a lot of these groups seven, eight, and nine in them. And as you can see here, they might be both class F's, but very, very different amounts of group seven. Therefore, they will have very different performance. So let's make some concrete and see what it's all about. So we're gonna use a 0.45 water cement ratio, 20% and 40% replacement of the cement by mass with fly ash. And this is the binder content that we use for our mixtures. So remember this plot I showed you before where I asked this question, can we do better than this? Well, here's our better. On the x-axis over here, I'm showing the amount of measured strength. This is what we measured. And this is what the model predicted. This is the predicted strength based on the artificial intelligence or the machine learning. Um, as you can see here, the equation is y equals x. That's like perfect match. That's like the perfect dashed line right here in the middle. It, it perfectly matches on average. R squared value is a 0.95. And this, these dashed lines here are the variations of the test method. That's with 20% flash replacement. 95% of the data is predicted accurately within plus or minus 10%. Oh, baby. So let's move on to 40%. Now, you know, a little bit higher replacement level, a little bit tougher to get right. But as you can see, we're still here at a Y equal 0.99X, pretty good. R squared value of 0.93, amazing. And look at this, 81% is within plus or minus 10% and 100% is within plus or minus 15%. That means we're gonna be within 10%, 80% of the time for 40% replacement at three days all the way up to 180 days. That's pretty cool. How this works is we develop equations that look something like this. This predicts the property at a certain day. There is the magnitude. This tells us how important that that group is at that period in time. And by multiplying these two together, the coefficient times the percentage of the group, that tells you the contribution to that property. Now, why is there no group six and eight? Where did they go? Well, not every group contributes. Some of the groups do almost nothing. So here's a big comparison of all these coefficients. These are 20% replacement up here at the top. This is 40% replacement down here at the bottom. This is the different days as they go up. And you can see a lot of these contribute and go up and up and up and up and up. And some of these don't do very much over time. They don't really contribute much. Let's dive into that. So these, group two, three, five, seven, and nine, they seem to contribute and they seem to go up and there's similar performance between 20% and 40%. This is pretty cool stuff. These groups seem to be reactive calcium silicate aluminate glasses. Now group two and three is especially interesting because it, it contains quite a bit of phosphorus, which is something that's not talked a lot about in the fly ash literature, but we find it to be something very important now, group nine seems to be almost 85% SiO2 or reactive silica or possibly quartz, but quartz is inert, doesn't do much. So it's probably mostly this reactive silica. 
Now, let's move on to these that don't do much. These are the ones that are kind of flat or they're zero, or maybe they're a little negative sometimes. These seem to be minerals, minerals like rocks. They don't do much. They don't react much. They just sit there and chill like rocks do. Now we got this group one over here that seems to be a little bit different. And on the 20%, it actually contributes to the strength, but at 40%, it doesn't. What? How does that work? Well, it's almost 80% iron. And low doses of iron in the literature actually show that they increase strength, but at higher dosages, once you hit the critical level, they have no impact. They seem to agglomerate together and there is no impact on the strength. We see the same thing in our testing. Whoa, right? So we've got similar data, similar models out there besides strength for diffusion, for resistivity, for setting, for heat. We're also starting to work on ASR. So we're gonna really change the game, really help bring all kinds of predictive capabilities to these different properties for fly ash. But how would you use this in real life? Well, you would take your powder, you would analyze it in the automated SEM. That takes a few hours. Everything else is just math. It's calculated after that, and it would predict the concrete performance after that. Now, what are the limitations of this? Well, we're using some very, very complicated equipment, but stay tuned, haters, because we got some simplified stuff coming up that's going to knock your socks off. And as you know, there's many, many things that impact performance, but our goal here is not to predict everything. Our goal here is to give a relative ranking where you would compare this fly ash to that fly ash and how it would change the performance. So why is this useful? Because prediction is power. If you know what's gonna happen, that's extremely powerful. We can have better classifications met methods out there than just C versus F. We can actually use this to go after reclaimed fly ash. Reclaimed fly ash? Yeah, you know those ponds where they've been storing fly ash over time? Let's use this stuff. Let's take this stuff and use it for good inside concrete. We're working heavily on that right now. And you can watch more about that in this video, Is Fly Ash Going Away? Ha! So we're looking for collaborators. If you're out there, you want to work with us, we would love to hear from you. Please reach out. We are trying to find like-minded folks. In summary, particle classification can accurately predict fly ash performance in concrete and show amazing insight into reactivity. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you dug this video, subscribe to my channel, and of course, leave me a comment below. And check me out on the gram and the book at concrete.tyler. Take care, everybody. Peace!